from your local election headquarters. This is Big Country Politics on KTAB. All right, welcome back to Big Country Politics. We are joined by Dr. Paul Fabrizio with McMurray University, political science professor. Thank you for being here once again. It's good to be here. Well, good, good because we have a lot to talk about as far as catching up. I was just telling you uh, when you walked in the studio here that we have been covering weather so much. I yes. mean, we've had so much rain. We've had a tornado, you know, weather around Abilene. We've been covering it so much. I haven't really had time to really pay attention to what's going on e even locally in politics. And I would argue that the weather is influencing local politics. Mm. And, and, you know, let's be honest, not just local politics, but also nationwide. I mean, Congress just this past week passed a disaster bill to help fund some of the disasters we had a couple of years ago. So clearly, weather is something that influences politics. You're right, because the, the latest thing right now, our county commissioners are dealing with um, lots of standing water out in Potosi. Commissioner Chuck Statler, Precinct 4, uh, hired, or they went and hired a, an engineering firm to look at the, the drainage out there. And if you've ever driven out there, there's lots of standing water out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in the end, what is government supposed to do? It's, it's supposed to protect us, and once it handles that, then the next thing is it's supposed to provide basic infrastructure so we can go about our lives. And all of a sudden, we're inundated with all this marvelous water, and it's now too much for our system to hold, so what do we do about it? And the only answer is we have to look to government, and government has to step up, and that's what they're doing. But where do they get the money? What kind of resources do they use? Those are all going to be political questions that have to be answered. Well, and you know, the city of Abilene is still dealing with the, uh, the big hell storm this time last year in 2014, where, you know, the, the, the big softball, baseball yeah. size hell destroyed everything. And the city of Abilene still has, you know, dozens of buildings out there that they're still working on and trying to get money from insurance to fix those things. Yeah. So it's not like these can be fixed quickly, mm -hmm. the lesson there is it's going to take time. And then you think about the tornado that we had Man. and uh, a couple hundred homes that were damaged and many of them no home insurance. What is the city's responsibility here to its citizens? What do we have to do? I drove through the area this past weekend and there were city officials working, cleaning up some of the stuff that only they can do. But what's the next step? How much responsibility do they have to help people rebuild? Well, yeah, it, it, you, you say that, and, and, and you know, they, they had a big part in helping clean up, because when we were out there covering this stuff, there were lots of volunteers at these damaged homes putting all the debris out on the curb, and then the city would come by and, and pick up that debris all day long. Um, so, they, so they helped in the cleanup, and now, like you said, you know, what, what's their responsibility in, in the recovery? Yeah, I mean, do we turn to our local officials? Are they the best ones to do that? You know, when we look at disasters on TV, we think about, well, FEMA would be involved. But this one, despite its devastating effect here, it's too small for FEMA. Yeah, FEMA's so, not involved. Yeah, so we're not getting federal help. We're not going to get state help. It's going to be local resources, but that means from us, the taxpayers. And so what kind of help do we want to give? Well, and, and, and not only that, but I'm sure there was a lot of overtime as oh. far as city. And, and oh. APD had uh, people around there for, for the curfew for a week. Yeah, there was a, a week. curfew yeah. here. Yeah, when was the last time city had a curfew yeah. because of an emergency like this? And, you know, that's the sort of thing that you don't anticipate. See, that's why you want to have some emergency funds in your, you know, a rainy day uh, yeah. fund in your, in your budget. But still, I don't think people anticipated a tornado here in the city. Well, and you know, that morning, I went out and was visiting some of the places, and I hadn't gone over to San Jose and, and, and South Fifth yet. I had started on the other side of U-Haul, or uh, and at U-Haul, and thought, oh, that's that's the biggest damage. And then I, we started getting comments on our Facebook page. Go over to San Jose, and I went over there. Oh my, I, I couldn't believe yeah. it. I mean, I had just never seen anything in Abilene like that. Yeah, the closest I could think of was the flooding that we had years ago. Years but, ago. But that was a slow motion disaster. This was just quick.
And then, you know, it raises other questions. What is the city's responsibility for notifying people? You know, there's that code red, sending out a message, my phone rang. Um, so I didn't mind. Yeah, so at least I had some warning. But what about those people who didn't sign up for that? Should we go back to sirens, which apparently were notoriously ineffective? Back in the old days, I mean, what's the best way to do this thing? Well, and you say that a lot of the people that live in the area, the affected area, say they heard the dias, the dias sirens before they got that phone call from Code Red, and and that's what a lot of people were, were, were telling us. And so we did the story. We sent a reporter out and said, you know, why Code Red instead of instead of sirens? Yeah. And and you know. I think the deal is that uh, somebody has said that the, this, the code red is a little more effective and the sirens are, are maybe too expensive to, to buy and maintain. Possibly, possibly. But then again, it requires the citizens to actually sign up for that. The code red. The code red. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there, there's these things that you really don't think about except in a theoretical way until the disaster yeah, happens and it's like, oh, did we do this correctly? are we doing it correctly what's the best way to handle this in the future and you know i always I've, I've been living here in the city for more than twenty years and it never occurred to me that there would be a tornado in the city i'd always been assured oh they go around us they're the south of us the north of us they never happen in the city of abilene and then a couple of weeks ago it until happened. a couple of weeks ago they, they did go around yeah. us. <laughs> and it's like oh no and look at this we've spent all our first segment talking about uh, disaster and d disaster relief. And uh, so when we get back on Big Country Politics, we're going to get into politics, and which we already have because yeah, of the weather, like politics. you mentioned. Exactly. We'll be right back.